Hello, welcome back boys and girls. Today's story is called Otter's Codes, The Real Reason Total Race Rabbit, written by Cordelia Smith, illustrated by Blueberry Illustrations. Now, when Rabbit hears the animals talking about what a beautiful coat Otter has, he becomes jealous and he tricks Otter to take it for himself. Now, let's follow along as Toto races Rabbit to the top of Black Mountain to win back Otter's coat and make sure it is returned. Now, this story is dedicated to great grandfather Dexter Smith, who wrote so many wonderful stories such as this. Now, let's see what happens. Let's get started. Chapter 1 Rabbit Grows Jealous Long ago, when the world was made, all the animals were given special gifts, and Bear was blessed with strength so that he could protect the forest and all the animals in it. Now, the great water spider was blessed with strong webs that even fire could not burn away. And Al was blessed with such great sight that he could see both the present and the future. Now, like the other animals, Rabbit too received a special gift. Now, Rabbit was blessed with intelligence. Now, sadly, Rabbit did not always use his gift well. Instead, he often tricked the other animals. And that is how Rabbit stole others' coats and ended up losing the famous race against Toto. Now, this is a true story of how it happened. Now, the day before the North Moon Festival, Rabbit was hopping through the forest and happened upon a clearing where the other animals were gathered, and they were excited for the festival. They were also excited to see their friend Otter. Now, Otter only came out of the pond once a year for the North Moon Festival because he loved eating chestnuts. And Rabbit hid and listened. He heard all the animals talking about how excited they were to see Otter again and his beautiful coat. And the animals said Otter had the most beautiful coat of all. Now listening to the others compliment Otter made Rabbit feel jealous. Rabbit wanted to have the most beautiful coat, so he thought of a way to trick Otter out of it. And then he hopped away to get Otter's coat for himself. Mm -hmm. Chapter 2 Rabbit's Trick Rabbit knew the path Otter would take up the mountain to the festival so he hid in the woods by the path and waited and when Otter came along the path Rabbit hopped out and greeted him saying hello Otter where are you going I'm going to the festival Otter replied I'm going to the festival too Rabbit told Otter, I know a special path through the woods that will take me by a grave of purple trees, and there's nothing sweeter than a purple. I'm going to go there on my way to the festival. Now Otter thought about what Rabbit had said. Otter had been eating trout, fish, eggs, snakes, and roots for a whole year and he was looking forward to the chestnuts tomorrow 
but the thought of sweet fruits made his mouth water, and he wanted some purpose too. May I go with you, rabbit? Other asked. Oh, yes, my friend, rabbit said happily. His trick was working. So rabbit led Otter through the woods to the promised grove of purple trees. The trees were huge and the ground was covered in juicy purples. And some of the purples were so ripe they had black spots like really ripe bananas. And rabbit and Otter feasted. And when their bellies were full, they sat down by the creek. And they used rabbit's god ladle to drink cold, fresh water from the creek. It's nice here. I think I'll stay the night in the Papa Grove and go to the festival tomorrow. Rabbit said. And Hodder thought, that was a great idea. So he said he would stay the night and go to the festival tomorrow too. He thought he might even have a purple for breakfast. Now at sunset, a chill filled the hair. Rabbit and Otter gathered dead wood and built a small fire to keep warm. And then they sat down to rest. Be careful tonight, my friend, Rabbit said to Otter. It is said fire falls from the sky at night in this part of the forest. And if it falls tonight, you run and jump in the creek. You'll be safe there. I have never heard of that happening, but I'll do it. I want to stay safe, Otter said. And a few minutes later, Rabbit said, Otter, your coat is beautiful. It would be a shame if it was damaged. Just to be safe, you might want to hang your coat on a tree limb. And then, if the fire falls, your coat will not be hot. Now trusting Rabbit, Otter hung his coat on a tree limb where it would be safe. And then he gathered a pile of leaves and snuggled into them to sleep for the night. And Rabbit gathered leaves of his own and acted like he was going to sleep. And then he watched the fire burn and waited. And when Otter was sound asleep, Rabbit stood up quietly. He pushed the ladle into the fire and scooped up some of the hot coals. And they were glowing red from the heat inside. And then Rabbit tossed the ladle of red coals into the hair and yelled. Hotter! Fire! Fire is burning! It's falling! Run! Run to the creek! Now Otter woke frightened. He ran to the creek and dove into the water. And when Rabbit saw Otter dive into the water, he walked to the tree where Otter had on his coat laughed. <laughs> and he put it around his shoulders and dashed away. Now Rabbit was sure he would have the most beautiful coat of all the animals now. Rabbit and Otter were not the only animals in the purple grove that night. Owl was also there and he had been watching. An owl saw Rabbit trick Otter and take his coat. Now when Rabbit dashed away, Owl spread his wings and took flight 
to tell the other animals what Rabbit had really done. Chapter 3 The Animals Meet Owl flew to the top of the mountain where the North Moon Festival was to take place the next day and many animals were already gathered and when Owl told them of Rabbit's trick they grew angry and Bear was the angriest of all. I will chase Rabbit until he's so tired he can't run away further and take others' coats, Bear said. No, Bear, we must find another way, said the mountain lion. What about a race? Deer asked. Rabbit is always trying to race everyone. Remember when he cheated in the race with me to try to win this home? And then the animals remembered and then they liked the idea of a race. So they walked together on a plan to get others code back. Chapter 4 Toddle Accepts a Deer Now when Rabbit reached the top of the mountain the next morning, he found Toddle sitting in the sun, getting toasty warm. <sighs> How did you get here so fast, Toddle? Why are you still going home from the last festival? Rabbit asked. I'm not that slow, Toto said. Prove it. Race me, Rabbit did. I don't want to race anyone. I don't want to race you, Toto said. Oh, come on. Please, I'll give you anything you want if you win, Rabbit promised. Okay. If I win, you must promise to give me that beautiful coat. Toto said. I promise, Rabbit said. Besides, there's no way you're going to beat me. I am the fastest runner in this forest. You couldn't even beat me if you had a head start. Okay, we'll race said Toto, and I'll take that head start you just offered me. So Rabbit and Toto agreed to race at first light the next morning, and they would run across the next five mountains all the way to the top of the Black Mountain, which was the tallest mountain in the forest. And the one who reached the top of Black Mountain first would be the winner. And Rabbit even agreed to let Toto start on the second mountain top to give him a head start. Chapter 5 The Race The next morning, all the animals gathered to see the great race before dawn. And Rabbit was on top of the first mountain. And when he looked ahead, he could just see the tortoise shell on top of the second mountain, as they had agreed. And when the first rays of the sun broke, Rabbit raced ahead, expecting to pass Toto going down the side of the second mountain. But before Rabbit could get to the top of the second mountain, he saw Turtle find the distance, going over the third one. Rabbit thought 
he would have to run faster and that other's coat was slowing him down. Running faster did not help. And before Rabbit could top the third mountain, he saw Toto crossing the fourth one. Now Rabbit was tired. He was breathing hard from running fast for so long. Otter's coat was making him feel hot and sweaty, but he was determined not to lose the race to the turtle, so he ran even faster. And at the top of the fourth mountain, Rabbit saw no signs of turtle, and he thought he was finally catching up. And that thought did not last long. Halfway up the final and highest mountain, Rabbit saw Toru standing at the top, waiting for him. Toru had won the race to the top of the Black Mountain. Rabbit was so upset, he threw Otter's coat off and he fell to the ground. Ryan. <laughs> now Owl had been flying above, watching the race, and when he saw Rabbit throw Otter's coat, he swooped down, caught it in the air, and took it back to Otter. Now this is a true story of why Turtle raised Rabbit. It was to get back Otter's coat. A few things changed after the race. Otter was thankful to have his coat back, but he never ventured far from his pond ever again. Not even chestnuts or poppers made him want to leave his pond now. And Rabbit didn't cry very long. He got up, he dusted himself off, and he went on to enjoy the festival dance. Now dancing makes Rabbit happy. Rabbit never asked another animal to race him again. Now having lost big races to both deer and turtle, but Rabbit still has plenty of other tricks. Don't worry. Toto and the other animals are keeping an eye on him to make sure that no one ever loses a coat. Now boys and girls, are you wondering how Toto stayed so far ahead of Rabbit and won this race? Well, between us, Toto and his brothers all look just alike. And the morning of the race, each one of them waited at the top of one of the mountains in the tall grass until Rabbit was in sight. And after making sure the Rabbit saw them cross the mountain tops, they hid and they let him pass. Now Toddle himself was waiting at the top of Black Mountain from the time the sun came up that morning to claim victory and make sure that Otter's coat was returned. Now don't tell Rabbit, he might start racing again. The end. Wow, what a wonderful, awesome, beautiful story. Thank you so much for joining us again for this wonderful story time boys and girls we thank you for being here thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel we'll see you soon